Hey, grandchildren. Grandpa here in the van again. I'm in the Theodore Roosevelt area of Timaquan Preserve in Jacksonville, Florida. Very interesting area here. There was a, a guy who lived out here. He died in 1970. So he died 33 years ago from when I'm making this. And he, his name was Willie Brown, downtown Willie Brown. And he lived out here for a long time, like his whole adult life. His cabin's not here anymore, but the the um, bricks, the you know, the foundation of it is is still there, out in the in the park right off the trail. So you can go past there. When you see this on the map, you say, "I wonder what kind of relationship to." to uh, Theodore Roosevelt, you know, who was a president of the United States like 120 years ago, and a fascinating man. I wonder if he was here or, or what happened. Well, Willie Brown was a, was a huge admirer of Teddy Roosevelt, and so he left it to the, um, to the national parks but he named it uh, Theodore Roosevelt. I, I, I'd say an area, I don't know the exact, how they, the, the, exactly what they call it. Nice trails. It hooks in with the Spanish pond trails that I did the other day. So I just got back doing a couple mile hike, getting out there in nature. And it's a good segue into the chapter of the Net Bible that we're going to be reading today, which is chapter 3 of Genesis. It is I don't want to say the most important chapter in the entire Bible, but it's right up there. It sets in motion all kinds of things. If I was going to spend time telling you my opinion about a chapter in the Bible, this would be the number one chapter that I would. I'm going to try not to say much. One thing I want to mention is that in, in popular myth, Adam and Eve eat an apple. Well, it's not an apple. It may have been a fig. I forget how they even say it in here because it's been a couple weeks since I've, since I've read this chapter in this Bible. But this is the beginning of sin and death, all kinds of things. But God wrote it, so I'm going to let his words stand. So let's dive right into Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more shrewd than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, is it really true that God said you must not eat of any true, uh, tree in the orchard? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit from the trees of the orchard, but concerning the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the orchard, God said, you must not eat from it, and you must not touch it, or else you will die. The serpent said to the woman, Surely you will not die, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will open, and you will be like divine beings who know good and evil. And that's the name of it, the, the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of knowledge. When the woman saw that the tree produced fruit that was good for food, was attracted to the eye, and was desirable for making one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some, to, uh, gave some of it to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked. 
so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So a couple things here. The serpent was one of the, the animals that God created and he could talk. So there's a possibility that all animals could talk before this day. And the other thing is, is that these people, it says they were blind, but I, I don't think that that's, that they mean physically blind. I mean, I've always thought of it as blind to the fact that they were naked. That wasn't an issue to them. They knew they were naked. They saw each other every day. This They could have been alive for a long, long time before this happened. And it never bothered them that they were naked. But all of a sudden, they ate this fruit and something happened to them. So it says that their eyes were opened. But I don't think that it means physically opened. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the orchard at the breezy time of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the orchard. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man replied, I heard you moving about in the orchard, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And the Lord God said, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So he didn't take blame for it. It said he was there. She gave it to him and he ate it, but, but he was there. He could have said no. He could have said you shouldn't eat it. So when you hear men talk about how women brought sin into the world? No. no, no, no. The man said, the, the, uh, the woman who you gave me, whom you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman replied, the serpent tricked me and I ate. So she didn't take responsibility for it either. She pushed it off on Satan, on the serpent. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the wild beasts and all the living creatures of the field. On your belly you will crawl and dust you will eat all the days of your life. And I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. Her offspring will attack your head and you will attack her offspring's heel. I'm not going to get in. I, I know what I believe that's saying, but I'm not going to get into it. Study these things over and over again and you'll decide what you believe. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your labor pains. So when... Apparently, if they had a baby beforehand, it was like easy peasy for the woman. But it was like, now, now you're going to be suffering. And my daughter, Courtney, is getting ready to go through that. My, my daughter-in-law, Lucy, she went through it three years ago with you, Arlo. And Courtney will be going through it probably in early August. With pain, you will be, give birth to children. You will want to control your. You will want to control your husband, but he will dominate you. And so, I do want to take a second to talk about this. Men are big and strong, and they can physically dominate a woman. And the way that women counterattack that is by being smarter. Because women are smarter than us, and we're tougher than them when it comes to brute force. So that's the battle that's been going on ever since then, that 
A woman's going to want to control her husband, but her husband's going to dominate her. And throughout history, that's been the truth. For short times, it, it, that truth bends a little bit. And right now, we're in one of those times where women have a lot of power, but over history, they have it, really. And I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. We're, we're talking about history. I'm just saying what it is. But to Adam, he said, because you obeyed your wife and ate from the tree about, about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground thanks to you. In painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, but you will eat the grain of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat food until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you will return. So beforehand, another easy peasy thing. There was stuff growing on trees, and you just had to go eat stuff. Nobody was killing animals and eating them. So they were um, now going to have to till the soil and, and raise animals. And, and apparently there were no bad plants that grew, no weeds that grew beforehand. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments from skin for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. And the Lord God said, Now that the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not be allowed to stretch out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So that was another tree that was there. And they were gonna live a long time anyway, but they could have eaten that one and, and, and lived forever. And apparently that's what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to eat that one and then they would just be really cool in paradise forever, but they ate the wrong one. So the Lord God expelled him from the orchard in Eden to cultivate the ground from which he had been taken. When he drove the man out, he placed on the eastern side of the, of the orchard in Eden angelic sentries who used the flame of a whirling sword to guard the way to the tree of life. <clears throat> so he didn't destroy that orchard, although I'm sure that the flood that happens in, in Genesis chapter 6 which was a worldwide flood, that's going to wipe out the tree of life. So God had to guard it from human beings so they couldn't get back there and eat that. And we've been dealing with this ever since. A lot to think about. Love you guys. Peace out.